The sound brings me Our back home is finally built. to this moment. It's as if I wrote this, but without tragedy, only truth. I'm living with or against the earth. Who are these people we've become? The one people I spent I'm calling you on the telephone like you asked me to. Do you remember telephone calls? I'm glad you asked. This is Active Listening, a new dramatist's podcast series that invites the resident playwrights to experiment with story, intimacy, and immediacy through sound experiences. This initiative was born of the questions that became urgent as our pandemic lockdowns began. What are creative alternatives to gathering together in rooms? What might a play for the ear sound like? Each episode is written, recorded, and produced by a different resident playwright. This one features work by Matthew Freeman, who writes, This past year, my father showed me several boxes containing my grandfather's writing, including a 300-page personalized version of the Bible and a letter he sent to the Library of Congress, describing how he wrote it and for what purpose. The resulting piece is a brief exploration of the history of strange religion on my father's side of the family tree. This is Before the Several Religions Are Deleted by Matthew Freeman. My grandfather was a machinist who lived and died in Lawrence, Massachusetts. He wasn't someone I knew well. I know my extended family by way of stories, not experiences. They weren't people I spent much time with, people I spoke to. My parents, for their part, seemed to be on the run from the people that raised them. So it was with my grandfather, Wilbur, from Lawrence. He was a sturdy, balding man with glasses, suspenders, and a thick New England accent. He was someone my father avoided. My father is now a retired Episcopal priest. His second wife is also an Episcopal priest. My father had a sister, I suppose my aunt, named Aline. She's long dead. I never met her. I'm told at the end of her life she had taken on the name Aline St. John because she had been spiritually married to St. John the Divine. I'm told when I was a child she visited my family unannounced and the family dog refused to let her pass the front door. Aline had two children, Brian and Gina. My cousin, Brian, was a gigantic man with a thick New England accent just like my grandfather and a tiny, blonde dog named Little John. He talked incessantly about God. He once told me Christopher Reeve had been struck down because he played Superman, which is like pretending to be God. His sister, Gina, had largely disappeared. Trouble at home, the family lore had it. Trouble with Brian. I met her only once at my grandmother's funeral. She was flanked by her husband and son, who never left her side, like Secret Service agents. My grandmother, Gertrude, died in her attic after being taken care of for years by my cousin Brian. Brian told the family she had died reading the Bible with a rose in her hand. Somehow I watched people accept this story. It was obvious to me that she died doing what most people trapped in the attic do, which is clutch their chest and cry out for pills. The last time I saw my own grandmother alive, she refused to let me into her house. She told me she was not allowed to let anyone in without Brian home, not even me. My wife's grandmother was coincidentally also named Gertrude. They called her Trudy. Apparently, she was a delightful person. Very recently, my father showed me a stack of yellowing typed pages, including a letter to the Library of Congress, dated November 1988. The pages, crinkled on monarch-sized paper, full of typos and misplaced commas, look like they were uncovered from a trunk in a sunken boat. There are two major sections. One is a short reverie about bees, apparently a sketch for a children's story. The other, nearly 300 typed pages of my grandfather's personal version of the Bible. What follows are excerpts from my grandfather's Bible in the letter he sent to the Library of Congress. Page 68, the story of God's love for you based on the whole Bible and the Bible lands. 
The Bible and You, Who God Loves, Chapter 40, Continued. Now Jesus said, When we shall do this again, it shall be in God's kingdom. So remember this Passover supper that God has given to us, and also remember that when two or more of you are gathered together, I will be there. So break bread together and drink the wine, and remember that it was God's only Son that died for you, because it was God's wish. Now they sang praises to God, and then they went out to the Mount of Olives, and Jesus said, You will all be stumbled, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. They now came to a spot named Gethsemane, and Jesus said, Sit here while I pray. So his disciples, being tired, were soon asleep. But Jesus had business with his Father God Almighty, and he prayed to God that he might be helped, for he was troubled to death itself. O oh God, not my will, but your will must be done. Now Jesus took Peter, James, and John, three of the original four, with him to pray. But they were very tired, and Jesus having come to them and asking them to watch. For Jesus knew that his betrayer was near. And then God answered him, and Jesus said, The time has come. My betrayer has drawn near, and the temptation is over. O God, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread of life, and forgive our debts to you, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For you are the power and the glory of our resurrection. Through Jesus your Son, O God, now the disciples and Jesus proceeded. And then Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him a crowd with swords and with clubs, and those from the priests and the scribes and the older men of the temple. And Judas went up to Jesus and gently kissed him, for this was the sign for the one they should take into custody, as the scriptures say. Page 134, the story of God's love for you based on the whole Bible and the Bible lands, the Bible and you who God loves, chapter 69 continued. Representative from him, and that one sent me forth. Hence now they began seeking a way to get a hold of him. But no one laid a hand upon him, because his hour had not yet come. Still many of them did put faith in him, and they commenced saying, When the Christ arrives, he will not perform more signs than this man has performed, will he? Now the Pharisees heard the crowd murmuring these things about him, and the chief priest and the Pharisees dispatched officers to get hold of him. Therefore Jesus said, I continue a little while longer with you, before I go to him that sent me. Then you will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am you cannot come. Therefore the Jews said among themselves, Where does this man intend going, so that we shall not find him? Does he not intend going to the Jews that are dispersed among the Greeks, and teach the Greeks, does he? What does this saying mean, that he said, You will look for me, but you will not find me, and where I am you cannot come? Now on the last day, the great day of the festival, Jesus was standing up and cried out, saying, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. He that puts faith in me, just as the scriptures have said, out of his belly will flow streams of living water. Now, however, he said this concerning the Holy Spirit, which those who put their whole faith in him were about to receive. For as yet there was no Holy Spirit from Jesus, because Jesus had not yet been glorified. Therefore, some of the crowd that heard these words began saying, This is for a certainty, the prophet. And others were saying, This is the Christ. Some were saying, The Christ is not actually coming out of Galilee, is he? And has not the scripture said, The Christ is coming from the offspring of David and from Bethlehem, the village where David used to be? Therefore, a division over him developed among the crowd. Some of them thought they wanted to get hold of him, but no one did lay hand upon him. Therefore the officers went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees, and they said to them, Why is it you did not bring him to us? Now the officers replied, Never has another man spoken like this. To the 
Library of Congress, Federal Library and Information Committee, Washington, D.C. Please be informed that this contents of approximately 300 pages is the work of two years of research from an encyclopedia, a Hebrew history, several versions of the Bible, mostly the King James Version, and an atlas of maps, plus my personal views on what this work should contain to further God's kingdom. Ecumenical, it was designed to enlighten all to the love God has for them, if they just become worthy of that love. It is a rendition of what was condensed. What I thought as not needed was left out, and what I thought was necessary I added. I tried to explain the passages as best I could that you might be enlightened to the fact that the whole story is God's love for you, and while it took many generations to complete, there is still the conforming of many people before the several religions are deleted, and all are one, and Jesus is their Redeemer, and God their Creator, and Resurrection is for all. Yours truly, Wilbur Milton Freeman You just heard Before the Several Religions Are Deleted. It was written, edited, and performed by Matthew Freeman. The music is from a Creative Commons licensed piece of audio found on freesound.org, generously uploaded by composer Tom Evans. Active Listening is a project of New Dramatists and is produced by Corinne Keithley Sires and Melissa Tien. More information on the series and a sonic visualization of each episode can be found by going to newdramatists.org slash active listening. New Dramatists is one of the country's leading playwright centers and a nationally recognized new play laboratory. Its mission is to provide playwrights with time, space, and resources in the company of gifted peers to create work, realize their artistic potential, and make lasting contributions to the theater. Active listening is made possible with generous support from the Venturist Theatre Fund of the Tides Foundation.